Welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game. In this game, two players duel each other using a variety of monsters, spells, and traps. To defeat their opponent, they must be the first to drop their opponent's life points from 8,000 to 0 by attacking with their monsters. This is the most common way to win a duel, but there are also several other ways to win. You can obtain an alternative win condition, such as getting the five pieces of Exodia the Forbidden One into your hand, and some duelists try to win by utilizing enough cards that they could inflict 8,000 points of effect damage to their opponent. We call this burn. And the last way to win is to arrange a scenario in which your opponent is unable to draw cards from their deck when they are required to do so. This will cause them to lose the duel, thus winning you the duel, and we call this deck out. So what is a trading card game? A trading card game is simply a game where all players have to obtain their own deck by purchasing cards, either from sealed products bought from retailers or as singles from other players, for money. Sealed products are booster packs, starter or structure decks, or other special game boxes created by the creator of the game, Konami, that they sell in order to make a profit as a business whereas singles are cards that have already been obtained by other Yu-Gi-Oh players who either don't need them or have them so that they can trade them for other cards that they do need. Alternatively, they can just sell their cards to make their money back. There are over 10,000 cards in the game, so you can technically make your own unique deck. Although many players choose their first deck by doing research on the internet from places such as YouTube or other websites, or from their friends to help them get started. Yu-Gi-Oh! can be a very expensive game, and it's important to try and do research in order to make sure you don't overspend on your first set of cards. As you'll be changing your deck over time, as you obtain newer and better cards, you don't want to overinvest in the cards that you're not going to be using long term. So it is either recommended that you immediately start out and spend the money to buy the deck that you want, or to buy a cheap deck so that you can learn how to play the game, and then buy a good deck when the cards you would want to play get reprinted, making them cheaper. This will happen from time to time. In order to duel, you will need to obtain a deck. The main deck includes 40 to 60 cards. That's the minimum and the maximum. You can play up to three copies of any card with the same name in your main deck, extra deck and side deck combined. There are also some cards that are officially forbidden from tournament play, as in you can play zero copies. Limited cards, meaning you can only play one copy, or semi-limited cards, meaning you can play two copies of the card between your main side and extra deck. There are some cards that are always considered to have the same name, such as Polymerization and Fusion Substitute. You can play three copies of Polymerization, but if you do that, you can only play zero copies of Fusion Substitute. But if you play to two copies of Polymerization, you can play one copy of Fusion Substitute. There aren't too many cards in the game where their name is always treated as the name as another card. But if it happens, it's something you should be aware of, as it affects deck building. Deck building is one of the most important aspects of the game. It's generally a good idea to play a deck as close to 40 cards as possible, because there is an optimal number in which a deck should be at in order to function with its maximum efficiency. And generally, that number will be something under 40 cards. And since 40 is the smallest number of cards you can play in a deck, it's generally the number of cards you would like to try and play, as it means you'll get the cards you'll want to draw faster. Depending on what your strategy is, the optimal number may be something higher than 40, in which case you should play that many cards. You'll also need an extra deck, which consists of 0 to 15 cards. The cards that are put into the extra deck are Xyz Monsters, Synchro Monsters, Fusion Monsters, and Link Monsters, or one of those types that is also part Pendulum Monster. You can play any of these types of cards, or none of them at all. This decision will be based on the deck you intend to build. These cards do not count towards your 40-card minimum deck list, nor your 60-card maximum deck list. They do count against your 3-card maximum copy of a card with the same name. These monsters are generally going to be a toolbox of options of effects that you can access at any point during a duel if you build your deck to allow you to access these different options. It is very rare that you will ever have a logical reason to play a number of cards in your extra deck other than 0 cards or 15 cards. The more options you will have access to during a duel, unless you wish to play a particular deck that will require you to play less than 15 cards in your extra deck. Usually 0. There are a few cards in the game that have effects that work specifically because you have less cards in your extra deck than your opponent, but that is very rare and generally these cards don't see any play. There are actually some decks that require you to have no cards in your extra deck at all, and these decks are more likely to be played than those cards that require you to have less cards in your extra deck. But usually having cards in your extra deck will be better than playing a deck that chooses not to use them. You may also play a 0-15 to 15 card side deck, which is a separate deck of cards that you can use to switch into your deck in between games of a mat. A duel is a single game, and a match is a best 2 out of 3 duels. So after the first duel of a match, you gain access to your side deck. The cards in your side deck can be cards that belong in either your main or your extra deck, that you are currently not playing in your main or extra deck at the start of the mat. After the first duel, you're allowed to take out one card from your main or extra deck and replace it with one card in your side deck that can be put into that deck. You can take out more than one card at a time and put in more than one card at a time, but each card in your side deck can only take the place of one card in either your main or extra deck. The number of cards in your main, side, and extra deck should be the same as they were before side decking, 
when you begin games two or three. Cards from your extra deck can only be substituted with cards that can go into the extra deck, and cards in the main deck can only be substituted with cards that can go into the main deck. You can substitute any number of cards from your side deck into your main deck or extra deck as long as you side out the exact same number of cards from both the main and extra deck. Every time you start a new match, your main deck must be constructed as if it was when you originally began playing in the tournament. So any cards that you sided in must be sided out, and any cards that were sided out must be sided back in for the start of game one of any new match. For this reason, it's always important to make your main deck built to be able to go first and second because you don't know if you'll be going first or second during game one, as this is decided by both a random method and a player's choice. Additionally, there is no reason to ever play less than 15 cards in your side deck. The side deck is almost more important than your main deck because you'll play more games with your side deck than without one. Because a match is played as best two out of three duels, the only time you will ever not be playing with your side deck is in game one, which means if you ever get to game three, you'll have automatically played more games with your side deck involved than without having access to your side deck. You may also want to have a couple of additional items to help you make sure that a game maintains a proper game state. You might need a coin or some dice available, as some card effects require you to flip a coin or roll dice. Most players favor using a die. When using a die for a coin effect, you can simply determine if the die landed on an odd number or an even number. Duelists also usually use dice to determine who will go first in game one of a match. Usually, both players will roll two dice and see who can get a higher roll to determine who will choose who will go first on the first turn of the duel. The winner of the dice roll gets to choose if they want to go first or second. Winning the dice roll does not state that you have to go first or second. It gives you the choice. After winning a dice roll, you must state if you intend to go first or second before drawing your starting hand and looking at it. If you look at it before declaring who will go first, you will have to go first. The loser of a duel chooses who goes first in the next duel of that match. Additional things you might want to keep around are called counters. Counters are applied to cards by card effects and are used to keep track of how many times something has occurred. The most common type of counter is called the spell counter and is usually applied to a card every time a spell is activated and resolves. So a card may get anywhere from zero to infinity spell counters. Counters are usually an object that is placed on top of an item in order to keep track of how many counters an item has. During official tournament play, you are not supposed to use a die and just place it onto the number of the counters that a card should have. You are supposed to actually have a certain number of objects placed on top of the card, but most players will still use a die as it's just far easier. A concern with a die is that it could roll onto an incorrect number, but you could just as easily lose one of the objects being used for the counters. While discussing counters, I figure I'll discuss a rule related to spell counters. If a card can put spell counters onto itself and it would be negated, it will no longer be able to hold spell counters as being able to hold counters is part of its effect. Most cards that allow them to do something they normally wouldn't be able to do stop applying when they are negated. Some cards put counters on other cards, like Preta Plants and Cubics, and they will not go away when the card is negated, as there is no effect allowing those counters to be held. They can just be held. Another thing that would be good to have is called a token. A token is a card that is created by another card's effect. It is not a real card. You can buy or obtain official tokens in sealed products or as singles. Tokens cannot be faced down and are treated as normal monsters. Tokens cannot be used for Xyz summons because they cannot exist as Xyz materials. You can use any object to represent a token as long as it can be clearly distinguished whether it's an attack or defense position. All properties of any face-up monster apply to tokens with the exception that they can never be faced down. If a token would leave the field for any reason, it is simply removed from the game instead. Because tokens are simply removed from play when they would leave the field for any reason, they cannot be used as a cost for cards that would send a token to a place it cannot go. So if a card requires you to send a card to the graveyard as a cost, or return it to the hand as a cost, you cannot do so with a token. If a token were to leave the field by a card effect such as being destroyed or returned to the hand, it will simply be removed from the game instead, with the exception of being banished face down. Any card effect that would attempt to banish a token face down cannot be used on a token. So a card such as Cyframe Overload, which targets a card and banishes it face down, cannot be used against a token. It cannot target the token, as a token cannot be banished face down. Even a card like Evenly Matched, which requires your opponent to banish cards face down, cannot be used on the token. They will be unable to choose the token to banish. So they will choose as many other cards as possible to banish face down to resolve Evenly Matched. It's also a good idea to have a calculator around to quickly determine what damage is inflicted during a game. Given the opportunity to write down life points versus keep track of them on a calculator, it is preferable that you do so with pen and paper. It's also important that both players actually keep track of life points. Disputes over life points can be frustrating for both players. I'd recommend both players take life points at all times and then confirm with their opponent if they have the same life points before continuing on with the duel. Another thing you're going to need are called sleeves, which are simply plastic covers for your cards so that they do not get damaged while they are placed onto the field or while you are shuffling your deck. 
They prevent your cards from being marked, and having marked cards is not allowed in the game. A marked card is simply a card that you can identify while it is face down, or that you would be able to locate in a deck while shuffling. The last thing, which is technically optional, is called a game mat. There are two player game mats and one player game mats. If two players bring their one player game mats together, you create what is called the field.